This is a second part of a two-part series on how to create and implement a data flow. So we already have our Visual Studio project up and running, and we have already pulled in a data flow task. Now we're going to go in and modify that data flow task so we can extract data from our AdventureWorks database and then place it into a specific destination. Let's come over here and take a look at our data flow task. So I've just selected the design tab and I could have gone into it either way. I could have gone to control flow and then just double click on the data flow task and it would have brought me to the design page as well. Now we see on the left hand side, these are the things that I can do within that data flow design tab. I can identify a source. I can identify a destination. Now both the source and the destination, those are wizards. If I scroll down here and I expand other sources and other destinations, I can manually create them here. But probably best practice is to use the wizards for the source and the destination. Now we're actually going to use two things. We're going to use the wizard for the source and manually create our destination if we come down here. Now when we look at the common section, these are all of the things that we can do as we modify that data. So here's what's going to happen. Let's go ahead and grab the source assistant and let's just drag it into this window. Now it's going to ask me to create a connection manager. And we can see here that it's only going to give us the source types for those that are only installed. So by default in SQL Server 2012, we have a SQL Server source, an Excel source, a flat file source, and an Oracle source. If I uncheck this box, we can see other sources that we have, SAP, Sybase, and Teradata, but those are not installed by default. So let me go ahead and check this box back, and we are going to create a source type and we are going to create a new connection manager for that source type. It's going to give us a native OLDB connection manager. The server name, if I hit this drop down box, may display my specific server name, but if it doesn't, I'll just go ahead and type in localhost, or you could type in the server that the source database resides on. We're going to use Windows Authentication. It's going to ask us what database do we want to be our source database. So we're going to select AdventureWorks DW. And again, what we're going to do is just come over here and test the connection. So the test connection succeeded, and then we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now, eventually what we'll see is down here under connection managers, I'm going to scroll up here. I have a connection manager at the project level, and I have a connection manager for the specific data flow. Now, you'll also see that this particular data flow has a big red X. That big red X basically means something's wrong. So within your SSIS packages, if you see a red X anywhere, basically that means there's something not right. It's syntactically incorrect or just flat out not completed yet. Well, this stage of the game, I know that it's not completed because there's more going into a data flow. So I'm gonna move this guy around a little bit and then I'm gonna double click. And the reason I'm gonna double click is it's gonna open up this connection manager and it's gonna say, this is the connection manager that you're using. Now I can hit the drop down box here and if I had multiple connection managers, they'd be displayed here. Let me go ahead and cancel. But you have to specify what data you're going to retrieve. So what's very important here to understand, the connection manager just identifies the database that you're connecting to. The source assistant will specifically identify the tables that you're retrieving data from. So it's really a two-step process. The first process is to identify the connection manager, which is connecting you to a specific database. The next thing is within the source editor is to identify the specific table using that connection manager. So it's going to ask us, how do we want to get our data? Do we want to look at our data from a table or view? Do we want to use a variable? Do we want to type in a SQL command or we want to use a SQL command from a variable? So we're just going to go ahead and say table or view. Now it's going to say, hey, what is the table or view that we want to select from? And if I hit this drop down box, it's going to identify all of the tables within my database. So all of the tables that are available under the AdventureWorks DW. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up dim customer. Now, if I want to, and this is very important as well, and I'd highly recommend it, we want to come over here and we want to preview. So if we preview our data, what that does for us is it validates that the connection manager is working and the table exists. So let's go ahead and hit close. Now we want to come over here and evaluate on columns on the far left hand side. And this is going to identify the columns that we want to bring in. So if I can scroll down here, and there's a whole bunch of things here that I don't want. So I'm going to get rid of Spanish education, French education, English, Spanish, French. So those are the columns that I'm not going to bring into my destination. Then if I look at error output, the error output basically is going to say, 
If an error occurs upon extracting the data, what do we want to do? We can fail the component, we can ignore the failure, or we can redirect the row. We can apply this at each individual column level or for all columns within that source editor. Go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice when I did all that, the little red arrow went away because the source editor must contain a valid table as well as valid column mappings. Those two things must exist to get rid of that little red X. We'll also see here that it's named OLEDB source, and I'm going to rename it. To rename it, I can do a right mouse click and I can come down here to rename. And we're going to call this Extract Customer Data Flow. So effectively, what this is going to do is it's going to extract customer information. But I want to place it someplace. So now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a destination task. So I'm going to go into other destinations. I'm going to select a flat file destination and I'm going to bring it over here. You'll notice again that I have the red X. These two must be related. So I'm going to select the extract customer DF. I'm going to take the blue arrow. The blue arrow is going to indicate success. So what's going to happen is we're going to extract the data from here and we're going to place it into a flat file. I'm going to select the flat file destination. I'm going to go ahead and rename this customer file. Now if I double click on it, I have to create another connection manager and that connection manager must be a flat file connection manager. Since I don't already have one, let's go over here and click on new. What type of a format do you want? And I want to have a delimited format. I can have delimited, fixed width, ragged right, or fixed width with row delimiters. Let's click here, and that's going to take a second for that to be created. Now, the other thing that is very important is that once it's created, we also have to do column mapping. So here, I'm going to browse where do I want to place this file, and the file name is going to be placed here under Infinite Skills, and we're going to call this customer.txt. So it's a flat file connection manager that's going to be placed in this destination. The language is going to be English, and it's going to be delimited. I can come down here and look at the columns, I can do advanced, I can do preview. And preview is going to identify what rows to skip. So let me click OK. Now, before we go any further, we have to map the columns on the mapping page. So let me go to mappings, and this is going to map the input columns to the output columns. If I scroll down here, you'll notice I eliminated some of those other columns and we don't see them here in mappings. So now let me go ahead and click OK. What we've done is we've created a little mini data flow that's going to extract the data from the customer's table and place it into the customer file. So I'm going to come over here, and the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and run this program. And I hit the little green arrow here under Tools. And this is going to go out and build the program and then load the data in. We see down here that the build is complete with zero errors and zero warning. I can see that this project has successfully completed. What I'll need to do is go to debug, stop debugging, and I can see that the data has been extracted and the data has been placed into the particular directory that we've identified. So if I scroll over here and I scroll down, I can see the processing of file C infinite skills projects customer text has ended. So now what I can do is I can come over here under my Windows Explorer and then there is the text file. I go ahead and I open up this text file. I will see that I will have a common delimited file with all of my customer information. So here I'm going to go ahead and close this down and close this down. Let's close out the output. And what we've done is we've created a mini data flow that extracts information from the customer table and then brings it into the customer flat file.